Well, that was disgusting. By that, I mean the job we just completed, where we scrubbed the life back into our filthy dinghy. We found an isolated beach here in Kariaku, where we were able to pull it up on the shore and get to work. You're probably wondering why it looks like this and how we could possibly be this neglectful and disgusting. And you would have a point there, but I can assure you, it's harder to maintain a clean bottom in a sinking dinghy than you might think. Mother Nature is a force. I'll let Tanner explain. So since our dinghy has been sinking, it has been getting growth inside of it because it constantly sits underwater and bakes in the hot Caribbean sun. And then the, the water overnight just fills it up and starts to get growth in there. I have to pump it out every night. We'll have to pump it out almost every time we get in it. But it used to be in the little hole, but now it's just black in the inside and cleaner up there. That's where it sits because it sits a little half heavy. And so with a little effort, she went from this to this. a long and much needed cool off, Tanner scrubbed down the bow and stern lines. Those needed love too. And I politely held the boat in place. Job well done. It seems we have restored our dignity. Oh, feels good to have that done. I didn't want to be barefoot in my dinghy, as you could tell, for, I mean, a long time. So now we are comfortable and we can drive around and not be totally grossed out. Really glad that that's over with. It has been a job that we've been wanting to do for a while. We just haven't really had a chance to stop and pull it up on a beach somewhere. So we're really happy that that's done. Now we can move on with our day. Since we've been here in Tyrell Bay, we have been really eager to go over and check out the mangroves over here where a lot of people will pull their boats into for hurricane protection and it's we can see all the masts kind of sticking up in that area just obviously showing that there are some boats tucked away in there so we're looking forward to going ourselves we're going to bring our dinghy and our clean dinghy and see what it's like in there do you have an update for me what's going on just trying to hammer this open. It um, seized, not seized shut, but there's just a lot of sand in there. So it's stuck with the sand and it's not wanting to open. So we're going to um, try to get it open. Try without breaking it would be the ideal thing. doesn't do that again. I don't want to get stuck to a dock. That would be the worst. Ooh, that's a good point. At least we're stuck to our own boat. Yeah, at least it was locked to the boat. A little bit of WD-40. Some uh, version of Corrosion X. Okay. And some T9. It's the shit. T9. Like when we were kids and the keyboard option on our cell phones. Yeah. yeah. Even when we're not doing boat projects, there are still projects that we have to do. Tyrell Bay is widely known as a destination where cruisers can tuck away for hurricane season. You might get your boat hauled out of the water to get some much needed work done, explore the friendly island of Kariaku, and call this place your home for a short while. But some people never leave. Some people, such as the man from the movie The Sailor, 
He came here on his humble sailboat and simply never left. The documentary is shot right here in Kariakou. In 2017, when Hurricane Maria was approaching the Caribbean, 80-year-old Paul Johnson tied his sailboat to the mangroves right here in Tyrell Bay for protection from harsh winds and swells. We wanted to explore these mangroves and see what kind of boats, old and new, have been left here for the same reasons. Some of these boats look like they've been here for a short period of time, but then there's others that look like they've been completely deserted for years. And as we know, like hurricanes don't typically come through this area in Kariku. So are they just deserted? They're just completely left by their owners or are their owners even alive? Maybe that's also something we're seeing in here. It's sad kind of because some of these boats are beautiful or maybe once were beautiful boats and they're just tied up to the mangroves like this, completely weathered and abandoned really. But then there's a couple like the one behind us that looks like it was probably placed here not that long ago and hopefully somebody's coming back for it. You just really can only speculate. It's rather peaceful in here. We've got a wrecked boat and then all the rest of the boats behind us. It's nice in here. Hang out, have lunch, be a great place for a picnic in the dinghy. Well, that's not a bad idea. It would be a good idea to have a picnic in here because nothing's blowing away. <laughs> a lot of these boats are very unique. They're not like your average sailboat. Yeah, they're pretty sweet. Full of character, I would say. Different, definitely not production boats, which is cool. No. There are a couple life rafts and canopy covers and biminis. <laughs> some things that are really, really nice looking a left on some of these boats. You wonder if you could, if we could just call the owner of some of these boats and get a good deal on a life raft. I mean, it's a thought. I love the detail, like that eye at the bow on each side. It's a beauty. Spending time in the mangroves was relaxing, almost poetic in a sense, but it doesn't take much for us to work up a serious appetite. So after a day of cleaning and filming, we tied up for lunch. What's happening? We just walked by a little um, place here and we're hungry. So we walked up and it looks kind of like a little fast food type menu, but the gentleman said, would you rather a fast food lunch or a real Caribbean lunch? And we said, a real Caribbean lunch. And he was like, okay, are you okay with surprises? And we were like, hell yeah. So I'm doing a surprise fish and Tanner's doing a surprise chicken. Thank you. Oh, I think that I still got chicken. You didn't forget the fish, and it looks epic. Killed it. Killed it. 
crushed it. Now I can make a light dinner, but Tanner is getting chicken wings again because that's what I defrosted. So he's in his glory that he gets to eat chicken wings twice in a day. Damn right. Let's put the sticker up. Yes. So you got it in the spot you wanted. One of the spots for sure. It's nice. right, right in there. Lunch was nice. Sometimes it's nice to just not have to cook and get cooked a meal by a local. It's nice. It's cool to get a Caribbean meal. It's pretty tasty. That fish was really good. Meanwhile, back on the boat. Last night, one of our bilge alarms started going off because our sea strainer for our raw water intake for the engine started leaking. So we had to pump out the bilge last night. Um, and then I shut the seacock to the engine, so we're not going anywhere at the moment until I can fix that problem. And then, this morning, I woke up to use the head and it was not flushing. So, we had to bail that out this morning and that's another problem we're gonna have to address. So, we can't go anywhere because we have to fix the engine and we want to go pull up to a dock and assess this head situation we might have to rip everything out it's been a project we've been having to wanting to do for a while however it may be a project that we have to do now it's hoping it would suffice until we hauled out here in a few weeks but I guess not I'm gonna rip apart the C strainer today and see if we can fix that issue and then we can test it make sure the engine runs there's no leaks um, and then we will start figuring out a situation for the head I know loads of fun for now, we tackle the engine issue. Just gotta get this C strainer, the top of the C strainer off. That could be what caused this issue. Oh, wow, yeah, that's a lot of sarcasm. This is our raw water C strainer for our engine. And as you can see, it is clogged with sargasm. The waters in the Atlantic at the moment are riddled with this stuff. Although it isn't the root of the problem, we are very glad we checked it. Next, Tanner loosened the hose clamps enough to get those off and start cutting through the piping. You did it. And then there's a reinforcement little bar in here that needs to be clipped because it's steel reinforced. So. That's that little thing right there. Uh -huh. And now this is all the water that's in the engine. I gotta cut that little wire off. And we got the sea strainer out. Nice. I'm just gonna get these off. Am I good? So now that we got it out, I'm just gonna take it apart. I'm also gonna take, I still gotta take all of the hoses off. They're still attached, but I just wanted to get it out of there. It's a little bit easier to work with. But I gotta take them apart. And then it was leaking right here. So I gotta take this piece off, take this piece out, clean, take it apart, clean the whole thing up. And then we're gonna put these back together with some nice good sealant. Okay so that it stays good and then we'll refit the hoses back on there, tie them down and they should be good to go. So I was finally able to get those pieces off, the little extra ones that are clamped on. They're really hard to pull off. You could use a heat gun if you wanted to, but the issue is is that they have these little metal steel barbs that are strewn about throughout the entire thing. So. Cutting them off doesn't really work very well and heating them up, this is metal, it doesn't really work super well. So what I do is I'll slice pieces open or slice the first layer off and then take wire cutters and then just go down the line and clip them. And then once you do that, you can peel the whole thing back just like this. Oh. Oh. They're in 
lies the issue of a completely corroded pipe. Oh, completely corroded. Yep. Excellent. We're starting to corrode out and chip off. So we'll need to replace this piece. It's even coming off in my hand. Yes, yeah, so we'll need to see if the Marine store has this piece, putting it back in here, making sure it doesn't leak for the meantime. We only have to travel six hours and we know this doesn't even have to be six hours under sail. Or sorry, six hours with the motor on, it'll probably be a couple hours with the motor on and mostly sailing. So I might just put this piece back on there for now. And then once we get down there, see if we can source um, a new piece for this. More surprises. It's stuck in there, so there's a ton. I'm actually gonna take this other side off because it looks pretty bad, to be honest. I hate sargasm. It's the cause of a lot of our problems. We're gonna refurbish this bitch, put her back together for now. Look at that. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> and that's stuff you can't get to, folks. It's not like that's just your sea strainer you can clean. <laughs> to cut this thing out of your boat. It's not perfect, but it's see-through. So now I can see the sea strainer. So but it's see-through. There's one spot right here on the inside right there. That one. It's corroded all the way through to the other side right here. So yeah. it was leaking out this little hole. All right, so we just got back from the Marine store. They had the part. We actually got an improved one. This time it has the pipe fitting on one side and the normal fitting for the Groco strainer on the other side. So it'll be perfect. Let's gotta just get these installed and put it back together. Hope for no leaks. We've got them both in place. We gotta tie them down. Let's see if it leaks. Fill in with water. See if I give it some air. There we go. success.